All right, I've broken into my neighbor's house and I'm gonna steal 10 of their games. Um, my neighbors are also big board gamers. One of them just uh, designed a game that was picked up by a publisher, which will be on Kickstarter eventually. And I'll be excited to talk about it because I play tested it and it's good. But what I figured would be a fun video, I told them this, so I'm just, um, I'm really, we're really just looking after their dog while they're away. But because they've got a nice little game room area space right here, you can see some more games over there. And there you can see a couch that, um, well, Renee has, uh, oh yeah, that's, this is a much better background. Uh, you get all the board game geek art. Renee's been on a couch buying spree and we don't have space in our place for many couches, but she wanted to try them out and like refurbish them. And so she's doing that while they're away. Surprise, if you're watching this video. Um, but I figured it'd be fun to go through their collection, kind of do a little bit of a collection tour that's not my collection because I always like seeing what other people have and investigating and just rooting through their stuff while they're away. So this is a uh, collection tour of my neighbor's collection and uh, let's get to it. And I figured I would, I would pick the, the five or the 10 games as we go through. I'll make a list and then I'll sort of rank them at the end uh, of which ones I would steal and which ones I would want to add to my own collection, I think. That would be fun to go through and uh, and figure out. So I'm going to switch to camera angle and we will do that. This is their game table, by the way. Uh, I'll, I'll write a link to, to what type of game table it is. I'm just trying to show the table itself. Uh, it's quite nice. It was really st sturdy. Uh, I was going to film putting this together because I came over and I helped them uh, put together. This top piece is just one piece of wood and then you have this sort of inlay here where you can hook in the the coasters which you see up top uh, but I didn't do that because I didn't get enough footage to actually make a decent video but I know that they've really enjoyed it so far and they also have the topper as well and it's a game company that I don't hear a lot of people talking about so because they've enjoyed it now for mm, at least six months uh, I will I will f put a link right now right there that's the title of their, that's who it is. That, no, that's what this ta game table belongs to. I'm trying to just zoom out while, on, while not um, showing the couch and the, and the drawers that Renee went on a spree and bought. But yeah, really solid, uh, nice table, good, good depth, probably more than four inches. Uh, and then up here too, they have all this Board Game Geek art, which I just love. Uh, this is from the Board Game Geek store, and I think... They're all great. I would steal Root. I think Root is my favorite out of these designs. But this that's something that I referenced as a good gift if you're interested in picking up a gift for uh for your for a gamer that's not more games. I will swing around so we don't see the pictures of their children. That's probably respectful. And let's start here. Um Valyria Card Kingdoms, I haven't played, but I've heard it's fun. It looks like it's art by D'Amigo. Let's pull it out. You can't pull everything out. Nope. Illustrations by Miharu Dutra. Yeah, that one. Um, Valeria Card Kingdoms is one that I'm interested in. You know, I should be doing this with them. It's, it's much better to do. This is a much better format to do when, they're, when you have the people. We have some unlocks. I think I've played these unlocks. If not, maybe I'll steal them. Squeak and Sausage. Is that one this one? Oh, Professor No Sides, Animal Omatic. He's uh, recurring in the Clutch of Haiti. Around the world in 80 minutes. I haven't done that. I might steal that. Look, I'm already stealing every game I see. I am an addict, and that is why my channel is the way it is. Uh, Roll for the Galaxy, uh, which I know is um, one of uh, Yuval's favorite games. He's the half of the, the partnership that owns all these games. Uh, he really likes that. He's the one who introduced it to me. I, I like Race for the Galaxy as well, but I, I do see the benefits of Roll for the Galaxy. Uh, you're, you're, it's exactly the same as Race for the Galaxy, but you're just uh, rolling. You get to assign them on the different developments, and you're using those to purchase little tiles. And it's still all about that cycling through while you get the good buildings and not the ones that are there. Okay, so Tiny Towns. 
Tiny Towns is fine. I have Tiny Towns, so I don't need to worry about it. Catan, always solid. Pandemic Legacy Season 2, this is not in Shrink. It means it's been played more than me. Azul Queen's Garden, I want to play that with Renee, because I think she'd like it. Agricola, well, okay, I have to pull out Agricola, unless it's right here. Yes, it is right here. I don't have to pull it out. This is a blinged out copy of Agricola, They're homemade with all these resources, which are so good. Look at these little carrots. Uh, look at these little bundles of wheat. They made all of these because they like Agricola. This is just some clay that's like kind of broken up. Some rock, some just like pebbles for the rock. What do we have in here? This is the, the reed. Oh, this is this is so cool. I remember when they showed me this. And then look at these. Look at all these little... This is a cow. It's a one-eyed cow. <laughs> a little one-eyed cow. Some pigs, I assume. Look at the pig. Look at the handmade pig stuff. And the little sheep. These are just incredible. I think... They made all these. If they didn't, I'll, I'll try to find out where they did. And then the food. It's just various food. So all your food is different. So you can have a healthy, balanced diet. And then some wood. Some sticks for wood. Uh, and then the uh, the first player marker right there. Well, didn't, didn't do that. And then the buildings. I just think this is so cool. This might go on my list. I own Agricola, but I just like... <laughs> I love I love that. Um, would I steal it? I would steal those, that's for sure. Nuns on the Run is a fun game that Renee hates because it's hidden movement. But your little little uh, people running... Here we go. Let's adjust this here. You're going to run around the abbey, and you need to get to the sort of... You start in your chambers. Start in your chambers down here, and you need to get up to get your secret goals because you are one of these uh, saucy little novices dodging discovery. And so you got to get there and then get back as the, the abbesses roam the halls. It's kind of neat. Survive. Escape from Atlantis. I have this still, so don't need to steal it. Terraforming Mars. Always saw they have all the expansions, though, in here, in this one box. Let's root around. I only have Prelude. They, oh, maybe they don't have all the expansions. They do have all the expansions somewhere, but then you've got the blinged out pieces and then the blinged out uh, boards as well, the wooden boards, which are fun. Just a little bit of bling in the base box so that you can take the base box somewhere. Wouldn't steal it because I own it. I just saw something over on the other shelf that I would steal. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, these are just sort of like... There's some dreidels. All right. And some bags. Oh, some crokinole. Crokinole chips. Nice. Alright, moving down. The Colonies expansion for Terraforming Mars. Camel Up. A decent racing game. Ubongo. I don't know if I've ever heard of this or played it. Oh, it's a French Ubongo. Be the first person to place all your pieces. Everyone has 12 pieces in a different area. But it's the quickest person. Okay, so it's a speed game. But pay attention, it's not always going to be the quickest person, so it's just kind of a speed game, but sometimes it's not a speed game, you've got to pay attention. That's cool. Escape. From 100 million BC. Cool, is that like Escape the Cursed Temple? This is neat, 1 to 6. Designed by Kevin Wilson, Descent Arkham Horror TMNT. Searching for valuable technology, avoiding rampaging dinosaurs. Yeah, I don't know if this is good or not. Looks kind of neat, though. All right, and then over here, we have the mystery on the Orient Express. My days of wonder. That's not how it is. That's how it is. <laughs> See? There you go. Myst the aptly named Mystery Express, or hurdles towards its final destination, locked on board. Anxious passengers spin a web of intrigue and deception. Your mind races as you consider all possible suspects and their motives. Will you uncover the culprit before reaching the end of your journey? I don't know. But it seems like there's different uh, train cars that you can go into. That's kind of neat. Not enough to make me want to steal it, though. Moving along, uh, I know three of these on here on the Boss Stone Age Mupil Circus. Circus. I don't know the ancient world. Let's look over here at it. It's by uh, Red Raven Games. So I assume it's a Ryan Lockett. It is. Illustrated and designed by Ryan Lockett. 
Five tribes have been fleeing from the Titans for centuries, but things are about to change. You are the leader of a small nation pledged today in the reign of terror and fight back. Seems very Ryan Lockety, which is something I can say, having never played any of his games. <laughs> um, moving along. Stone Age is great. I've just grown tired of it. I think the the fact that you get all your points from cards is not something I'm into. Then we go over to this section. This is a good section. We have Eclipse, which I haven't played, but I should. Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition, which I heard is great. And then Everdell, which I own, and fantastic. Ticket to Ride, the base, which I stole from my parents. Then we have Azul and Wingspan, Wingspan Oceana Expansion. That looks like Charterstone to me. It is Charterstone, which I own, and I've never started a campaign of... Because, let's be real, all my legacy groups disappear on me. And then just down here, we have this stuff for the uh, for the table. So I don't think there are any games in there. Is this weird? Oh, some hats. Look at that. <laughs> and some umbrellas. Umbrellas on a game shelf? That can be replaced with more games. Alright, that's that shelf. If I had to steal one thing on that shelf... Um, I'd steal Roll for the Galaxy... I would be cool with adding that to my collection. M maybe Eclipse, because I want to play it. Maybe Queen's Garden, honestly. It, it's pulling me back. I know I talked about it in the in the Niagara wrap-up video, and it was kind of middle ground there, but I like Azul, and I like the sort of puzzles that it does. So, yeah, it might pull me back. And then, obviously, the, the token for Agricola is the way to go. All right, let's move to the other shelf. Shabam! Over there, and then there's more downstairs. But we're just going to go through up here. Again, just to be clear, I have made this messy, or Renee has made this messy, not them. Uh, up here, we have Ishtar and Downforce in Toronto at the Dollarama. Both of these were being sold for five bucks each. There was clearly like a sell off sale. And um, yeah, there were a couple more that was just like backstock from Yellow when, that people were selling, which is really cool. That's empty. Concordia, I really dislike. I really dislike Concordia. It's again my issue with Stone Age is that you don't know what the cards are going to do and you have you spend so much time developing this board presence that all this stuff is happening on this board and then you're just collecting these cards which give you points and then you look at the board and you're like, oh, I spent all this time developing the board and trying to expand and I, it's, it's not about that. And so I played it twice. I don't think I'm ever going to play it again. It's the way it's scored that feels weird to me that I just don't like. I like the, what you end up doing on the board, but I just don't like how it's scored. And that's kind of dependent on all the cards. Uh, so n nothing for Concordia. But Chinatown is something that Renee loves. So that would be something to steal. There's a bunch of hero realms here that I would be interested in. Exit Secret, Secret Lab. Rhino, Rhino Hero. I know Rhino Hero is like a dexterity game, right? Rhino Hero is this dexterity game where you are fearlessly scaling the highest houses to look for burglars. <laughs> a heroic 3D stacking game. <laughs> oh, I love this little thing. Luck and ability. <laughs> a little bit more luck than ability, but it's still uh, just stacking a, a house and hoping it doesn't topple down. Rhino Hero is cute. I, I think um, it's one of Haba Games' uh, sort of darlings, so to speak. Over here we got some more, I was going to say Dexterity Games. Yeah, Ark Nova the Dexterity Game, <laughs> didn't you know? Hamster Roll, or Hamster Rolly, is actually really fun. <laughs> You've got this big old wheel, and you're putting blocks on it. No blocks of the same color can be in between these black spaces, and you have to put the, blo the blocks, like further up the roll and anything that falls out of the wheel it can fall into the wheel but if it falls out of the wheel you have to take it and you want to get rid of all your blocks it's very similar to like bomboleo or bambolio depending how you call it blockus honestly blockus holds up dark moon which is battlestar galactica light arc nova which you might have heard about and robo rally which is fun but i know uh, you've all really likes this one as well moving over here they've got this stack this idea that a lot of people do for their small games. They put all their sort of small games in this little package so that it's easy to to just pull out. But I do like that they've kept the boxes. A lot of people don't keep the boxes. We have Hanabi, great game. 
Love Letter, it looks like in here, and probably another version of Love, Le Love Letter. Great game. Lost, Lost Legacy, Starship, Lost Legacy Flying Garden. No idea what that is. Oh, sorry. The Mind. Yeah, Mind is solid. It deserves to be put away with everything else. Lightspeed, the real-time game by Tom Jolly. Never played that, but uh, would try it. Story Cues, that seems very uninteresting to me. Wizard, oh, I didn't know they had Wizard. Wizard's great, it's just Screw Your Neighbor. It's just a card game. Uh, I mean, Screw Your Neighbor's better. The Wizard adds in Wizard, so even if you have the best Wizard and you play it early out of turn order, you just you may not win the trick, which annoys me. Fidelitas, a game about medieval meddling. Hmm. Guide by secret objectives. Players wield influence, maneuver city citizens into key positions around the city. That's cool. Like that kind of reminds me of masks, maybe a bit. Robots, never heard of this one, but Pandasaurus, a game of time and speed. Wow, nominated for Kinderspiel. That's cool. I'm gonna have to look into that. How far do you think the robot will move in about four seconds? Well, it depends how fast it's going. They develop a feeling for time and speed together without talking. Oh, doesn't you have to work out how it stops? That seems pretty neat. Um, what's this one? Flower fall. Oh, I've played this. You kind of just throw the flowers on the table and you're dropping them and where they drop uh, makes a difference. I played that. That's kind of fun. Uh, the Mind Extreme. Loco. Feels like no thanks, but, uh, but an opposite. Colorado, which I've heard a bunch, but I've never played. Seems like a nice, well-worn copy, though. Like a chameleon, a player may change its color at many times during the game. So you must wait for the proper time to make the change, so you're constantly changing colors, but at the opportune time. That seems neat. And Set, which I love. I think Set is an awesome game. Uh, and that's just been clearly modified to, in a, because it's just a deck of cards. This isn't the original box. This is a smart way to do things with, with the bin. I like seeing all the little ones uh, and what what they do, but I think that's uh, that's pretty neat. Okay. I hope you don't think this is weird. I have their permission to do this. It's also just kind of fun looking through other people's collections as well. And this is something that I'm going to be doing. Anytime I visit someone, I'm going to steal five games or ten games from their collection. And I will be taking them. I will be taking them. <laughs> So let's go on to this one over here, Avalon, fantastic. Decrypto is a fun, um, again, party game in that code name genre. That's probably why it's over here with code names, just one. Get rid of Munchkin, just do it. Second Chance is actually maybe the most interesting on the shelf. I mean, Avalon is, let's be real. But Second Chance is a fun little roll and write that I've tried, where a tile's flipped up and you scratch that little polyomino onto your, onto your page and you want to be the most efficient with how the polyominoes get, get turned up. And then also, if you can't do it, you get a second chance. And so you get to flip one over. And that's fantastic because that's how I won the game. <laughs> because I, uh, I, needed, I needed a one, and a one was flipped over, and it was completely random, and now I like the game. <laughs> um, moving along, the Emerald Flame. This is like a big escape room style game. They were playing it with Renee. I played a little bit of it. I played like one of the puzzles and helped. It was pretty neat. So if you like escape rooms, this is another another one to look into. A narrative puzzle adventure. It feels like it would be resettable too. Uh, and the puzzles were fun. They were a bit tricky, but I think that's what you want. Trek 12, which I heard is good, but I know it's Pandasaurus. I think it's Pandasaurus. Trekking through the Himalayas. Roll the dice. Create zones. At the end of the game, calculate your score. So this is the sort of zones you're going to... Connecting things from 1 to 2 and like going up and down. And there's going to be some uh, some restrictions there, as there always are for roll and rights. Welcome to Imachi Koro Classics. Over here, Dinosaur Island Raw and Right. <laughs> Maybe that's on the list for me to steal. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> somebody stole my copy. Metro X is a fun little roll and write. I, I played this for the first time, talked about it in the Niagara convention. You have a map, 
What is this with all the boxes being in the wrong direction? That's the real travesty of this video. You got a map, a card will flip up, and you got to cross off points uh, along the map. You can only do it a certain amount of time, so I could only cross off gray a certain amount of time. So if I get a, if I get a five, for example, I'd cross one, two, three, four, five, and I'd fall along the track. But if I was going up to orange and I already filled in here and I got a five, I'd go one, two, three, and if I hit something here, I'd have to stop unless you have like a skip you can skip over one so you're trying to fill up the most get to the end of the line if you get to the end of the line you get those points there very simple very simple game micro macro is where's waldo the board game which is good knight of the ninja is uh it is a fast-paced game of deadly secrets this was my favorite at origins colin and zach didn't like this so much and they're completely wrong it's just a fun quick social deduction and i like that the teams uh switch up and around Marvel Smash Up, I have zero interest in. Over here, we've got Bang the Dice Game, also have zero interest in. Innovation, which I haven't played, but I do have interest in. Uh, the, the two hits on this one, though, are Happy Salmon, which if you've heard people screaming at a convention or somewhere, you've pro they're probably playing Happy Salmon. Everybody gets a deck of cards, and you, you, have, like, you have to look at the top stat top of your stack and you have to get somebody to do the thing and when you do you throw it on the ground <laughs> so if it's like high five high five high five somebody high five me please please uh and so when that happens then you get to do it and then funny bones <laughs> which is so stupid but i played this for the first time it's a, a game for people who love to laugh that sounds like me <laughs> see i just proved it uh literally you just keep drawing cards and it'll say ear bone to shoulder bone, and you and a partner have to do that. It's like Twister, but with a partner, and it's uh, <laughs> really stupid and fun. All right, let's let's keep moving down. Over here, we've got One Night Werewolf and Vampire. Cool. Space Base and the Expansion. Cool. Watergate. Cool. Watergate two-player game. Enchanted Tower. All right, that's fine. And then here we have Parks and another Unlock game. The Shivers, which I played once, it's like a pop-up escape room style game. They got it on Kickstarter, I think. It's okay. It looks kind of like that, and it'll all pop up. So that's all pop up. And you have to l literally visually look around the scene to see stuff. And you get to open doors and be like, hey, I found a wrench. And then you go over to the kitchen and you use that for some reason. It's You have these standees that really don't make a difference, but, you know, it's all right. That's going back down. And then uh, over here we have Concept, which is good, but I got rid of mine because it's just it, I'd rather play other party games. Vigilante by our mutual friend Reed uh, is a very fun superhero game that likely will be having an expansion and a reprint that I will cover um, when in like sometime in May, I think. I'm always going to do that because I like the base game and I like Reed. So there you go. Dominion, a couple expansions for Dominion. Uh, down here we have Rolling Realms, which is very fun. Sheriff, which is good. Suro, which is like route building that I don't really care. And French Toast, which is another little game, kind of like a little party game. I think they backed it on a Kickstarter or they know the designer or something like that. I kind of forget how to play. But you're going to get a, a number of different words that are lined out. And then I think you're kind of arranging them. So to, you're trying to guess a word and you're trying to show like the range of words that you're putting out. I think that's what it is. Maybe not. Maybe that's a different. Oh yeah, no, see, I was right. There's the hint scale. And so you're going to be putting the hints like at the range of where it is and it is not. And so you're going to arrange them. Uh, so if my, my thing was a globe, and somebody said pointy with their word, they put it over here, and I'd put it over here, and I'd be like, it's not pointy, because it, it is a globe, right? A globe is not pointy, and so that's kind of the range of how you get that done. It's kind of neat. Moving over here, Scythe, Rise of Fenris, and a bunch of stuff, which is great. Down there, we have Broom Service, Puerto Rico, and Istanbul, all great games. 
And then over here we have Loop and Louie, of course. Two copies of Loop and Louie, because I think they're one stop, stop working. And Loop and Chewie, you have a full calyx devoted to Loop and Louie, and honestly, it's it's the correct thing. <laughs> um, and then down there you have more like party games as well. It seems to be the organization of Pictomania, Apples to Apples, Wits and Wagers, and more Apples to Apples. Pictomania is actually pretty fun. It's Pictionary where you're trying to guess everybody else's stuff uh, very quickly while also drawing yourself. It's pretty good. That's the shelves up here. And then now I'm gonna go cut to downstairs to see more, and then I'll come back with the games that I would steal. I think we're pretty close to, to knowing them though. Is this interesting? I don't know, let me know if it's interesting. It'll be formatted in a better way when uh, I do it with other sort of content creators, because then I can just talk to them when I'm not just alone in someone's house, but it's more sneaky this way. So, of course, I think that's what we like. Busted. <laughs> Busted! Look at all these copies of uh, <laughs> of Ishtar and Pacific Rails Incorporated. Probably taken for math trades. Dwarves Fall? You have on, on Dun & Shrink? This is clearly the, the, the closet of shame down by the other sort of closets. Here, I'm just going to pan up for the shelves. The other shelves that they have. See, this is, if I had a basement, I would do this as well. And then a few more. And a few more. And a few more up top there as well. So let's start here, eh? Since we're, since we're up there, pitch car is just the reason why I want to start. Because I've heard really good things about it. I can't reach out to get it, but uh, that might be one that I would steal. Over here, we have some Chronicles of Crime 1400. I think, yeah, they gave me all their other copies of Chronicles of Crime because they didn't like them. So Renee is kind of flying through that. This light is going to drive me crazy. Um, Facilis, I'm actually very interested in playing. I think that one looks cool. If I can reach it, just pull out the back and switch the angle for you. You've got, you're going to be uncovering bones. So you set it up and you're moving things around in this sort of 3D track. That feels kind of cool. Um, Magic Maze is great. This is a game that you cannot communicate. You are flipping over tiles. You're trying to steal. That's going to drive me crazy. You've got all these little tiles, and uh, you have to get each token. It's a cooperative game. You have to get each token needs to get to their weapon and then get to their specific exit. And there's a but you cannot speak. You can only tap this pawn, the do something pawn, to try to convince somebody to do something because only one person can move everyone left, and the other person can move everyone right. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Hive fun game that I want to tap to my collection. Caverna, which <laughs> you've all still wants me to teach him, but I need Zach to reteach me, so maybe I'll just cut out the middleman. Ugh, that is one I'm definitely not stealing because it's just atrocious. Civilization. I've never played Civilization, but I, I think it it looks cool. I just don't know. I'm never going to pick up Civilization and learn it. I would play it if somebody were to teach it to me. Um, Above and Below, which is Ryan Lockett, which I've heard great things about. Villainous, which I really don't care for, honestly. And Slide Quest by Blue Orange, which I don't know if I've ever heard of before. That's the box cover. That's the back of the box. The bad guys have taken over our beautiful kingdom, and it is in total chaos. You have to save the world, and quickly... Work together to guide this brave rolling knight through the turbulent adventures which is lined with twists and traps. <laughs> and then you have to roll roll the knight through this thing? <laughs> that seems um, potentially <laughs> really, really incredible. <laughs> it's kind of like ice cool, maybe? And you gotta roll them through the... into the holes or make them not fall in the holes? Oh, this this looks incredible! <laughs> <laughs> They've been holding out on me. Uh, all right, let's look over here. Kingdom Builder by my favorite Queen Games. Honestly, I think um, I think Kingdom Builder looks like a good game. If I could steal it and not have to pay Queen Games money to try it out, maybe I would do it. Never heard of Niagara by Rio Grande. Let's check this one out. Hmm. Huh. So that's cool. The Wild Rapids of the Niagara. Fearless canoe battlers battle the river to collect gems along the riverbank. That seems like a kind of neat board. 
before you go over the falls. <laughs> they can row up and down the river. That's neat. Getting those gems. All right. That's kind of neat. Um, Castles of Mad King Ludwig is fantastic. Captain Sonar, I'm really glad I've played it. I don't think I'll ever need to play it again. Dune is still in Shrink. We have to play that. Small World, both regular and underground. Corridor is f okay. It's barely okay. It's slow. It's just so slow because you take two move. You take one move on your turn, you place a little line, or you move a little piece. You're just trying to get to the other side of the board. And it's just kind of like, I move, you block, I move, you block, etc., etc. So you're trying to, like, stop the other person from moving, but you can never block them completely. <laughs> Dungeon Fighter, I've heard about, but I can't recall what it's about. Dungeon Delving, Dice, and Dexterity. Combines dexterity, adventure with a good dose of humor. Doesn't really tell me much, but it looks like it looks like with that sort of target board there, that's where the dexterity element's going to happen. And in terms of how much damage you deal, that seems like it could be kind of fun. <laughs> I like the art. <laughs> Look at this guy. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm, am I going to steal this just based on the art? Likely am. <laughs> uh, all right, next next row. Mysterium, solid. Battlestar Galactica. We know how we feel about that. It's pretty good. Great Western Trail, first edition. Well, I've got both now. <laughs> Evolution, Sulkin, Village, Pirate's Cove, Colt Express, and Machi Koro. Sulkin is, is Sulkin and Village I have. Uh, I've played Colt Express. This is Machi, Machi Koro Legacy. I haven't, Evolution, I know how to play. I was supposed to do a uh, video on the reprint of Evolution, but it never showed up to my door, which was unfortunate. And so you're just building up your ecosystems and fighting people. They also added in a solo mode where I don't think you want to play this solo. But I've heard it's good. It's kind of the same system as Oceans, if you're familiar. You're getting additional traits onto your animals as you level them up. And then Pirate's Cove, Days of Wonder. I wonder what that's about. Also should be noted that they have uh, teenagers now. So maybe that's sort of the collection. Or some might be for, you know, for them. Battle for the right to plunder. Become the most feared pirate the world has ever seen. To do so, you'll need to navigate shrewdly, fight recklessly, and pillage mercilessly. You gain fame by winning battles, burying gold and treasures, and bragging about your exploits at the tavern. At the end of 12 months, pirate the most fame will be declared the most fearsome pirate of the high seas. So it's got this little grid board. You're going to be playing stuff, probably visiting areas, picking up stuff, getting points. Yeah, I'd try this one. That one feels neat. I mean, I like Days of Wonder. Days of Wonder generally can put out some fun hits. I'll have to look that one up, because I haven't played it or really heard about it. This is why I think this is pretty fun. Uh, Root! I played Root for the first time here, which is kind of cool. A Splendor, always solid. More Settlers stuff. Or Seafarers, Settlers, just the different editions. Sorry, we can't call it Settlers anymore. We call it Catan. Terra Oh! This is actually what I need to borrow <laughs> for World Series of Board Gaming. In <laughs> I am stealing this, but not for me. It doesn't count. <laughs> the Acquire, uh, I am stealing that so I can run the WSBG tournament at Breakout. Terrorista and Oran Labora, both you all and Matt and Dave have Oran Labora, and I haven't played it yet, and I really should. Uh, Freeman Freeze, copycat, Frieza, copycat, that was in my rap. I haven't played it. I actually didn't know that you, you've all had a copy of it. We got Rune Wars up there, too, and the Game of Life. Like, just get rid of that. And then a bunch of those sort of, like, little book games. Oh, Dice Town is fun. Dice Town is fun. You're, it's literally just gambling. You've got, you're rolling dice and you're assigning them to a number of these different places in the hall. 
and you get a certain amount of money depending upon who goes there. You got these little little dice shakers. You're trying to get additional bonuses. That one's pretty fun. Oh, they've rolled through the ages. The Bronze Age. I have the Iron Age. And then Dual and, and Dual Pantheon. That's cool. Forbidden Island, sure. Oh, and the old classic Go In Mid Four, which looks like just Connect Four in smaller blocks. Spyfall, solid. Sushi Go Party up there. Give me that miso soup, baby. Is that miso soup on the. No, that's, that's ice cream. Where's the. Is there miso soup on the side? Come on, we're gonna find it. If there is. No. They're, are you kidding me? They're not even showing miso soup, which is clearly the correct part. The, the, the most appealing part of the draw is the miso soup. Carcassonne Lost City, sure. Clank Acqu Acquisitions Incorporated. Ah, I haven't played it, but I've heard it's, it's great. Uh, moving down, we have Rampage. This is the one that I've talked about in, like, top ten gateway games. This is the older version. It's now called Terror in Meeple City, I think, because of copyright restrictions. This is where you're, fl it's a dexterity game, and you're flicking your little monster around and destroying buildings and eating all the meeples. So good. Gulo Gulo, which I've never heard of. It's a very light box. The Wolverine, known as Gulo Gulo, is always hungry. Especially when a nest of, near a nest of fresh eggs. Then goes, uh, are just as keen on swamp vulture eggs as adults, but not as careful. Whoever moves along the... Okay, so you're... You're... You're the Wolverine's parents trying to rescue your younger Wolverine who's been caught eating a majillion eggs. But well, Wolfgang Kramer, though. He, Kramer and Giesling are a pair. With special rules for young gulos. So just push your luck moving along the path. <laughs> All right. I'm down. If there's one thing that I've uh, really appreciated about this uh, collection, it is all the funny art. <laughs> That's a funny one. Okay, we're close. We're close to the final judgment. I think I'll probably only pick five. I'm going to pick five games to add to my collection because there's a bit of crossover. Seven Wonders, Endeavor, Age of Sail. Or oh, that's just regular Endeavor, isn't it? Age of Sail is supposed to be better. Yeah, this is just Endeavor. Endeavor Age of Sail was better, and then there was a new reprint that just happened. Box one. Nice. I've heard that's a fun escape room game. Sushi Roll. Which somebody referenced me earlier. It's the rolling dice version of Sushi Go Party. The roll for the galaxy, if you will. Bombaleo, the big version. I have a smaller version of this now. Uh, can't Stop, too big for Can't Stop. Zularetto, which is like Coloretto. Another version of Robo Rally? What's going on here? <laughs> the older version? Well, it's one of his favorite games, so I guess that, that is why it's having multiple versions. The larger box of Catacombs, this one probably has the, the playmats in it, that's why it's so thick. Here it just seems like a bunch of older games. Oh no, Power Grid Deluxe! Power Grid Deluxe is, should not be under all this sort of stuff. Viceroy, I've heard is fine. It feels like we're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. Rush Hour, just kind of more like kids' games. Pie Face, King of Tokyo, Marvel, this is where my uh, Marvel United ended up. And then some stuff down here. All right, I'm gonna make my list. I'm running out of room on my phone. So I'm going to make my list of the five that I'm stealing, and then I'm just going to take them. And they're never going to know until they see this video. Actually, this is one that they want me to take. I missed it over here. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> but One Week Werewolf, which is actually fun. One Week Werewolf is actually pretty decent. You're going around. Let's see if I can get this out of the stack. Renee and I played this with their kids one time, and we had a good time. Oh. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. 
the cracks of one one week werewolf it's just like one night werewolf but there are these other rooms and so you're going to be moving yourself around these rooms and taking the special actions in those rooms and potentially swapping with people and talking to people it's actually a really solid implementation of just like a larger version of the one night werewolf giving you a little bit more control i think it's worth talking about so if you like one one night werewolf and you want just a little bit more of it you should uh you should check that one out but yeah cool rebellion that's my coffee too well we've traded back and forth but i gave that coffee away because i just need coup that's all i need all right i i've got my one that's a freebie and i'm gonna figure out my list and then we're gonna film it upstairs maybe all right the great part oh, about these cup holders is that right here it fits your phone just perfectly so I can have my hands free and I can talk about the games. I'm stealing seven. I decided to steal seven. I thought, what games am I interested in trying? So honestly, the first couple are just because I, I want to try them. And the other ones are because I know that I would be interested in them. Uh, so we'll count up from seven. Uh, and the results might shock you. Uh, number seven. Cut this part out. There we go. Don't have to cut it. You didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. Number seven is literally... <laughs> Uh, slide quest. <laughs> this looks so funny to me, and we're going to open it up while we talk about it to see if it is what I thought it would be. And it is what I thought it would be. There's this, there's going to be a bunch of maps, and there's going to be holes on them, and you got to move your little knight around to get above the holes. It's just like one of those, one of those little circle puzzles. Actually, I might as well just steal this, and it'll be the same, same game. Well, you know, you know this thing where there's a ball and you move it around. You gotta get it through the, through the stuff. I don't know. I think this this looks gimmicky, but it also looks funny and fun. So it's like number seven. It's an honorable mention. Like, I would steal it and I would probably give it back. Let's be real. But I just thought it looked funny and I'd never heard of it. So I, I like that idea. Uh, I don't even know if it's in print or not anymore, but that's number seven for sure. Now we're getting into the meat of things where there's actually interesting games. And this is one that I haven't played, but you've always been talking really highly about, and that's Watergate. Uh, I would absolutely steal Watergate, add it to my collection. I've heard really good things about it. It's a tug of war between Nixon and the reporters, and you're trying to cover up the scandal, or you're trying to expose the scandal. And I think there are dual action cards here. And I, if I remember correctly, there are dual action cards, and that would make it exciting to me to play. But yeah, it's, it got a bunch of awards. Best two-player game, Golden Geek winner, Man vs. Meeple, Shut Up and Sit Down. Lots of people like this game, and I, I, I've just heard it's really good. I know you've all picked this up at Origins and has really enjoyed it since then. And I haven't yet played it, so I'd like to try it. And especially as I know the size of the box for what's going to be a chunky game. I I would hope that this would replace Seven Wonders Duel for me. And if it did, well, you know, that's why, that's why it's on the steel list. But I haven't played it yet, so that's why it's kind of lower uh, versus some that I've played and enjoyed. And would just want to add to my collection. And the interesting thing about this, too, is that, like, we're literally neighbors our backyards almost touch so I don't need to steal these I can come over and borrow these whenever I want to play them which is great it's nice it's nice having that number five is Rampage because it's out of print uh, this is one that I've wanted for a long time I think I've had it on my list for a bit and it just is so stupid it's so stupid funny I think it might get annoying to set up after a little while, and you don't want to play this in a convention with COVID around because a lot of it's, some of it's like, and you can blow as a special ability to blow the meeples off. But the idea of building up this, this tower and building up this town and then just flicking discs at it, representing your monsters and trying to knock over these people and eat them is so funny by Antoine Bauza and Ludovic Moblanc. Just like, what a funny funny game and this is now terror in meeple city and it's probably out of print i don't know when it's coming back as well but that that adds to the allure would would absolutely love having that on my shelf also the key about this is that i can't steal the games because my shelves are too full and even with the additional sort of office space now that renee has created for me still too full but yeah 
What can you do? Uh, <laughs> moving along, this is another one that I, I would be very happy to have a copy of because of how you know accessible this is. That's space-based. And while I'm stealing, I might as well steal this expansion, which I don't know what it does, but it's got shy Pluto. So that's really how much more do you need to, to know? It's just additional components, additional rules and whatever. Space Base is one that I am stealing, and <laughs> they're not going to notice. <laughs> the Space Base is great in terms of that everybody gets something on your turn. That's what I really like about Catan. That's really like what I like about what brought me into the hobby of Catan is that um, you, you always got something, or everybody's getting something, and, and that bingo idea of you roll a dice and people can get things is, is always very exciting, I think very accessible. And so this is one that I would pull out happily to as like an accessible gateway style game, a quick game too, plays really quickly. Um, Space Base is it's just really solid. And so, yeah, I feel like I would like to have it in my collection because then I maybe I'd play it a bit more. Again, I'm just gonna request to play it next time I'm over here. Moving along to number three, because this video is getting long, with The Rise of Fenris, which I have not played. And I've heard is so, so good. I just want to open it. Campaign. Eight games. Eight game campaign. That's not too long compared to a hundred game campaign. Come on. You can play eight games of Scythe and unlock a bunch of stuff. I know there's like, I think there's a new faction in here. I don't, I, I've managed to avoid spoilers for the Rise of Fenris other than sort of generalities. It says there's 11 modules, so I mean, one of them's got to be a new faction, let's be real. Yeah, Rise of Fenris. The reason it's only number three, and it's not number one, is because... Oh, I don't even know if you've all played this. I know he got this in a bundle. I should tell him I'd do this campaign with him. That would be fun. You've all, if you're watching, let's do it together. Uh, the only reason it isn't number one is because of the time commitment that it would take to play eight games of Scythe, which really isn't that much of a time commitment, but when your schedule is jam-packed, as mine seems to always be, somebody put in a video, they said, I like your videos, but uh, why do you always look tired? Well, there's a reason for that, is that uh, once upon a time, I, well, I used to work six jobs, and now, now I only do three. So, I've really cut down. <laughs> you should have seen me before then. Um, because there's not enough time in a day, and you just got to do it. That was uh, that was me having showered, though, by the way. That's why my hair was crazy for that one. It wasn't, I didn't sleep on that one. I'd just gotten out of the shower, so. And I hadn't put on my face yet, all right? Uh, anyway, number three, I've just heard such great things about Rise of Fenris. I know it's phenomenal. This is why I'm absolutely stealing it and putting it into my collection instead of uh, someone else's. Number two, this is a game I have played a couple times while I've, while I've been here, and I've, I've enjoyed it, and, and I kind of look forward to playing it while I'm here, which then makes it that candidate for, uh, for stealage, and that is Roll for the Galaxy. Um, this is fun. If you like Race for the Galaxy, which I do, I've played a lot of it on Board Game Arena, this is one to consider uh, picking up it's the exact same thing as Race for the Galaxy, except there's dice. That's it. You roll all of your dice, and that will assign the power of your action that you can do, but you can only pick one action. Very similar to Race for the Galaxy, you can only pick that one action of thing that's guaranteed to happen, and then if somebody else picks a different action, well, then you can do that thing. And so you're going to be adding a bunch of different dice to your pool. All of the dice do various things, and that building of your dice pool and then your income is how many dice you get to put back into your cup and how that cycle improves is really fun. It's a really neat, interesting puzzle. And it's not really that interesting a puzzle. I take it back. People say that about a lot of things. It's not really an interesting puzzle. It's just fun. You just add to your income, you add to all of that. And uh, that's why it's my number two. And then finally, Renee's just entered. Hey, Jack. Finally, Renee, the number one game that I'm stealing from Yuval's and Kara's collection is going to be Azul. Number one. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, it's, I'm doing it mostly for you. Where's Chinatown? I wasn't going to take Chinatown. You don't love me? <laughs> 
I almost, I wish I'd said, I was about to say it earlier on. I was like, Renee will want me to take that, but I'm probably not going to. It's right behind you. It's literally an arm's length away. What the fuck? Well. You picked all the wrong games. Well, I kind of want to get Lords of Vegas over Chinatown to try it out more. You got nothing good. <laughs> what do you want me to steal? What the hell? I've never even played these. Well, yeah, that's the point. I played a lot of good games here. Well, we have those. I what know. what game do you want me to steal? Renee will look around. Chinatown. <laughs> How many times do I have to say it? Um. Chinatown. Uh, uh, Chinatown. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're stealing Chinatown. I'm not to pull it off the shelf. Uh, number one is Azul, Queen's Garden. We now have base Azul because I need it for WSBG. We have Azul, Stained Glass of Sintra. You played the third one, Renee, and she said she wa it wasn't that good. And this one, I want to give it another try. I'm feeling the pull. I'm feeling the allure of it. And, and that, I think, speaks to a, a good game. I didn't say it wasn't good. The third one. No, it was fine. It was fine, but it was your least favorite. Of, of great three great games, three big games better than this pile you have sitting here. You don't like Rampage? Oh my god. <laughs> Never even played it. <laughs> Neither have I. That's why I want to take it. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, this is why our house looks like it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, special guest from the peanut gallery. But yeah, Azul... Queen's Garden, the premise of this one is that uh, you're gonna have all, you're gonna be baking in these sort of hexagon shapes and each symbol is worth a certain amount of points at the end. You wanna connect all the same colors of different symbols. And if you circle some things, you get wild things that work that you can then use to buy additional stuff. And so you have this little sideboard over here. Okay. Um, yeah, you can kind of see where you're, you're holding on this is your main board where you're building and then the sideboard where you hold on to stuff and you're holding on to tiles and you're paying for those tiles with those tiles. So similar to Race for the Galaxy where you have to pay for tiles with stuff uh, and you're gonna be collecting in the same way of Azul of just one color on all of the different tiles that are up, which is a huge change and that is how I played it incorrectly in Niagara Burger Convention. So I think I want to replay it and it's, it, it's honestly a testament to Azul that I think you could you could warrant having a few. This is this is bad. I'm just in a collecting mode. I think I got to put these back on the shelf. <laughs> but I, you know, I think they are different enough. And this one feels the most thinky or the most like maybe Euro-y of the Azuls, like with a little Euro slant to it. And so I like the added complexity of it. I think that's what's making me want to come back to it and play the correct version rather than the fake version that we played half of because I think the correct version is uh, better. So there you go. None of them are Chinatown. Chinatown is a fun trading game, of course, which Renee loves. It's one of her top games and we don't own it. She keeps telling me to go get a copy and I, I haven't yet because, well, it would be the only thing that we would play <laughs> when people would come over. And I, I, I want to diversify. But that's, that's it. Uh, those are the seven games that I would steal from the collection, which, according to Renee, are trash. So what can you do? <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was interesting. I think it was kind of fun going through the collection and, and having some other ones to look into and, and what other people feel are worthy to be on the shelves for one reason or the other. You know, all that, all that sort of good stuff. So thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, thanks for um, feeling good about my picks. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Probably more of these are going to be coming, whether you like it or not, because it's the only idea I have. And I'm going down to Cleveland to film some stuff very soon with uh, Quackle Open Board Game Co. So you're going to get at least two more. <laughs> so uh, don't unsubscribe. <laughs> Make sure you do subscribe because we're almost at 10k. Wait, we're almost at that 200k bar. And when we reach that, well, then you can go back in the past of, of me when I hit 10k. And then I'm going to do my top 20 games of all time. And none of these are on them. It's only good games. Only good ones, not this trash. Anyway, see you later. My name's Chris George. And, um... Uh,
I don't have cash for this. So. I mean, it, it, it is madness that I put Slide Quest on this list when I, there are so many other great things to choose from. <laughs> I might have gone a bit rogue here, but uh, hey, the list is the list. It's definitive. That's how it is. We'll see you later.